Aquarius, Aquarius rising, and Aquarius moon people, this is your monthly astrological horoscope for January 2017. I keep saying 16 on accident, I just know someone's going to nitpick it. And if you're wondering why I'm so preoccupied, I have a Rambo, and he's like, I want attention now! Everyone else be damned. No, <laughs> no he is uh, He's going to be sitting with me, I think, for the majority of this video. So, Happy New Year to everyone. I just want to get that out there right away. But I also want to remind you guys that January is actually the time where classes start rolling out again. When, so, if you're interested in tarot classes, um, I've got the Tarot Tutorship online class going on up for registration right now on my website, integrativemysticism.com. Starts on the 8th. And I've also got a registration open for the astrology webinar on love, romance, compatibility, and karmic relationships going on later in the month of January. So if you want to sign up for those, you can at my website, integrativemysticism.com, same place you'd go to get a session with me. So what is going on with January, Aquarius? Well, a lot of January is carrying leftover energy. Um, there's a big leftover theme in uh, in 2017. If you saw the live broadcast I did, and it's recorded, so it's still up on the channel, um, discussing the 2017 astrology, I talk a bit about the Saturn-Uranus trine. And that's very fresh in 2017. It's very much uh, a, big, uh, a big energy going on in the background for everyone. And for you, this is happening between your 11th house of friendships, Sagittarius, and your third house of communications, Aries. And when we have Saturn and Uranus come together, we're talking about bringing order to chaos and making things easier to, you know, to reconcile, to reestablish, you know, to, to reform or heal. And a lot of this does have to do with your, your friends, your alliances, you know, your social contacts. And this could bleed over into other areas of your life as well, including love and, you know, and, and business. But we're talking about getting you back in touch with a connection to a lot of your friends, you know, and Saturn's been really working that over a lot the last couple of years. But when we have Saturn and Uranus in a harmonious trine, it's time to be more inclusive with our friends. We're going to be focusing a lot more on sharing more of our, maybe our professional or our creative goals with our friends. We're going to be finding sort of that sense of teamwork again during the month of January. We're going to be actually kind of forging a new team. What I like about the this connection as well, though, is that this does, again, reconcile um, and it reconciles a big word this month uh, for a, you know for a lot of Aquarian people who are looking to maybe get a relationship that's been maybe on the rocks a little bit with a friend back on track. Have things been a little bit tense? You know, sometimes we have situations where we have a really close friend, but we miss them and they're sitting right next to us. You know, where have things kind of gotten a bit too weird, too you know too dysfunctional? We're gonna be working on reconciling that a lot of this month. This is also a time where, again, maybe you it's time for you, Aquarius, uh, with Uranus in that third house of yours, to kind of step up as sort of a leader or a surrogate uh, leader of your group if you feel like there needs to be a leader, somebody taking the reins, you know, making sure everything stays on, you know, on, you know, stays together, make, making sure that this, this tight group, this, this band of people, you know, works well and works strong together. This is your time to really take care of that. You know, because your sign is all about, you know, the Uranus energy, which can be about revolution, but it's also about the people. And, you know, making it about the people and helping the people, you know, do that one for all and all for one kind of vibe. That is all of this January for you. And, you know, we also have another bit of leftover energy going on. We've still got Mercury, currently retrograde, in your 12th house of secrets in your past. And for the first week and a half of the month, a lot of you Aquarius people are still going to be put on notice. Be so careful with sensitive information that is given to you, wherever it's given. You don't necessarily know what's meant to be kept in confidence when you have Mercury retrograde in your 12th house. And we don't want to be spilling anyone else's beans. However, at the same time, this is a good time for sleuth work. This is a good time to be kind of getting closer to people, having more of those deeper one-on-one -on -one conversations, and getting people to open up to you. But be careful not to betray their confidence at the same time. And even as we get into the fourth, Mercury's going to slide so far back into uh, Sagittarius. That's how far it's retrograding this time. Back into the eleventh house of friendships. You may even hear some secret information about a friend that prompts you to reconnect with them. 
you know, check in on them. You don't have to tell them what you heard. But, you know, in the middle of this month, you might be kind of like, I need to check in on that person. Really, that's what's going on. Okay, I'm going to go say hi. I don't care how much silent treatment's been going on. I don't know care how long the two of you have gone without speaking. It is a chance to reunite. After the 8th, Mercury will be going direct. And then after the 12th, it'll be back in your 12th house of secrets and privacy. And it's okay to start sharing information that you know is okay to share because you're going to have that ready. But you may also be put in the position of being sort of somebody's mouthpiece a lot. Um, in all areas of your life, speaking up on behalf of somebody and doing it well. And this might actually be a good way to problem solve, you know, especially if you feel like somebody doesn't have the confidence or maybe just doesn't even have the, 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 the you know, the, the articulation, <laughs> here I am going on about it, uh, to actually convey their feelings. You may be actually helping somebody get their point across as somebody important in their life as well. Early in the month, we also have Venus moving into your earned income sector where she will stay all month. And whenever Venus goes into a money place, we're talking about easy earnings and easy money for the Aquarius people. For those of you who are perhaps looking for a new job or you are just looking for a way to, again, make money without having to do, you know, to bend over backwards for it, Venus does make it easier because you're going to be given a lot of gifts. You're going to be maybe even offered a raise this month. You know, Venus goes into our, you know, into our second house about once every year and a half. And usually that is the time where people start talking about getting raises in their income or possibly even sort of unofficial promotions and all kinds of good things like that. And it'll be here all the way until the first week of February. So it's time to start circulating and putting that out there. If you're looking for a new job, you know what, this is also a great time, though I do think that February is better for looking for new employment. Sometimes, you know, if you if you need one right now, Venus is still going to be an asset there for you, and there may be a way for you to kind of get things to go your way or negotiate things to go, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say your way a lot more easily. On the 12th of the month, we do have a full moon in Cancer in your sixth house of physical health, reputation, and daily work. And when we have a full moon in Cancer, full moons tend to focus on the health side of things, and this may be a time where a lot of you Aquarian people um, decide that it's time to do away with something that you know is not good for your health. Um, some of you may be giving up a bad habit, such as smoking, or some of you may actually be working on um, getting back in shape, losing weight, bulking up, and a lot of you with this full moon in Cancer could also find that the energy is perfect, you know, for those of you that are actually trying to find maybe even a, a, a new um, outlet or a new place to actually do your exercise work if you're looking to, you know, maybe I want to go into, you know, into martial arts or maybe you want to join a, join a team, um, you know, or if for those of you who are already athletes, there may be even an opportunity for you to build a team around yourself with this full moon. This is also, again, good on the reputation and work side of things, though. A lot of you who may have been feeling like maybe some issues from your past, things that could be on a record or maybe on a resume, or maybe you're just worried about, you know, not having a certain credential or a certain type of history to get the job or the pay that you want, are going to find out that it might not necessarily be that big a deal, and that's going to be a huge window of opportunity between the 12th and the 24th. On the 19th, We've got the sun moving into your sign, uh, which is gorgeous in a lot of ways because it's a double wild card blessing. And the sun tends to work as an amplifier when it's in our sign. And anything that we touch tends to give out double results, okay? Because remember, the sun increases the yield of the work that we're doing or of the effort that we are making. So you could actually use this for anything that you want in, in a lot of ways, but the sun going into your sign is also talking about making sure that you are active and out there to participate in the stuff that you're actually trying to manifest. In fact, with the sun in your sign, you're going to find yourself a lot more popular, uh, not only socially, but in all areas. And the sun could even help you get picked out of a crowd if you are worried about getting lost in one. A week after that, well, maybe a week and a day after that, we've got a new moon in your sign, okay? And this is in your sign, so again, another wild card blessing, your birthday new moon. And it's important to pay attention to what you are planting the seeds for, you know, around this, this new moon. Whenever there's a new moon in your first house, you can definitely bet that whatever you decide you want to bring into your life and whatever emotions and efforts you put into it in that first two weeks following, 
are going to actually substantiate within 90 days. And so what do you want to start? What new beginning do you want to actually have? Do you want a new relationship? Do you want a new place to live? Are you looking for a place to move? Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to change your major? Do you want to travel? This is the kind of thing you want to pay attention to because it's a miraculous kind of thing, the new moon. Again, if you want something to pay off soon and you want to see a result fast, you want a new moon in your sign. Finally, also on the 27th, we've got Mars, planet of action and energy, moving into your third house of communications where he will stay for quite some time. And with Mars in the third house, this is a very interesting angle because you're going to notice that people are going to be doing whatever you want. Again, they are following your lead. This whole month is turning you into a leader, into a boss, so to speak. But you have to be careful not to come off too harsh. Mars will get people to do whatever you want, but we don't want to have it be in a bad, uh, in, in, in such a tough way where it's sort of like the carrot to stick ratio is just not very good. Um, a friend of mine, you know, quoted that and I thought that was perfect for what I'm looking at with Mars in the third house. It's like we want to make sure that the carrot and the to stick ratio or carrot on the stick ratio is fair because sometimes we can come off a little bit like a bully or a tyrant. That being said, if you do need to go and tell somebody off, or if you need to assert some boundaries, if you need to be sticking up for yourself, if you need to challenge something that has been decided against you, Mars in the third house is a wonderful blessing to have. So that is your forecast, Aquarius. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you'd like to get a session with me or sign up for any of the upcoming classes, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.